Take a look at this house. What would happen if I picked one of these pieces of paper from this hat? and you redesign this whole house using that style. Let's find out. Since we want to convert this old house into this Elizabethan inspired house, what we want to do is start with the obvious first. Let's reference the style by making the first floor masonry and then adding exposed framing at the higher levels. Masonry on the first floor is not a requirement, but it fits with this design. Instead of your typical red brick, I'm going to go with something more contemporary by using shades of gray. I'll use that similar palette for the framing. To create some contrast from the rest of the design, I'll use brown wood for the door. This contrast is also the reason why I've arched the head of the door. And to tie that back in, I'll add a splash of brown to the brick layout. I'll use the stucco as the backdrop and make the framing a dark color to really make it pop. This stays true to the typical Elizabethan typology, except I'm going to be adding a third material, a stone of some sort, which references the base of the original home, except this will look better than the original. I'll use the framing to create a grid on the facade, which I'll use as a reference plane to align things like windows and other elements to it. Additionally, I could use the framing to create interesting patterns on the facade to complement the overall design. If I want to reference that Elizabethan style even further, I'm going to need a chimney, especially one with an ornamented stack. I'll also remove the porch because this really isn't something that you typically see in the style. Now I have space to add that chimney and I'll run that brick coursing from the first level all the way to the top of the stack. Now that I have this open space, I can add a garden and I can use this garden space to add vegetation that contrasts the rest of the scene. Additionally, the resident can use this as their own vegetable or flower garden. Windows are really unique in the Elizabethan style, and I definitely want to reflect that in this design. The typical typology includes angled mullions to create a diamond-shaped grid. I do like that, but I feel that the mullions block the view. So we're going to reference the style, but we're just going to tweak that original concept. I really want to make those bay windows special. I'll start with the original grid, but open up a void in the center, which will make it easier for us to see through. I can now use this void as a motif and replicate it in other places like the framing to tie these various elements together so it doesn't feel random. The second floor window is also special since it's the only one up there, so I'm going to give it its own design. Same circular motif, but the mullions around it will be vertical to match the framing around it. Finally, the last visible window will stay traditional as I don't want to compete with the door and this window will only be used to peek at guests and allow light to enter the space. Therefore, I don't mind that the mullions are going to be distracting to the view. I'm almost done with this overall design, but I don't want to distract from it. So I'm going to avoid creating this grand staircase approach. Instead, I'll go with something simple, but not too simple because that will be distracting as well. I'll create a simple baluster design with a ribbed profile that's derived from our vertical framing spacing on the second floor, except here we're using that spacing horizontally. I'll add some profile designs for the finishing touches. That is, I'll add some elements like fascias, window trims, and the rafter edges. You could think of these as garnishes. They're not necessary, but they totally enhance the design. Now to help me visualize the design, I'll create a rendering using twin motion. I'll add vegetation, materials, and lighting. And just like that, we have our design. But let me let you in a little secret. I'm not totally happy with the design. I mean, overall, I did enjoy the process. I did enjoy what the final outcome was of the design, but there's so many things that I would have done differently. This is because for those of you that have done things creative in your life, you understand that whenever you're doing something creative, you always look back and think, I should have done this differently, or I wish I would have had time to do that. It's, it's never gonna be 100% perfect, especially when I only give myself about a week and a half to create these videos, and that doesn't include only the design of the house. It also includes all the video editing and shooting film and whatnot, pretty much everything that goes into making this video. So why don't we do this? Let's take a look at this design that I did and let's point out things that I wish I would have done differently. The first thing, <laughs> that raised garden. It's something that seems so cool in my mind when I first thought of it, but it ended up being pretty much a failure. It would be such a pain to take care of and it doesn't really add much to the house. I guess the tree looks okay and it does provide some necessary contrast, but that's all it does. It deserved much more thought. The stairs were also something that, in my opinion, deserved a ton of more time. I argued in the middle of this video that I wanted to keep them simple, but they're so simple that it looks distracting. The material I ended up choosing to give them wasn't a good choice and they do look strange. Speaking of materials, I think that overall the palette is successful, but this house was a perfect example to experiment with a little color. 
This monochromatic palette I have chosen is elegant and it works well, but I think the Elizabethan architecture is a fun style that perhaps could work well with more color and different material. The landscape unfortunately also suffered from my lack of time. I tried to do some research on what native Illinois plants are, but I didn't have time to actually source these 3D elements to put in my model and I didn't have time to create an interesting layout for the landscaping. It's really too bad because this would have made a big difference in the final design. Finally, the profiles that I spoke about earlier, I think are okay and they don't bother me, but I think there was so much more space for experimentation. It would have been great to add some embossed prints or even some void cutouts at the end of those rafters to create more of a contrast with the walls of the house. But anyway, this was a really fun project to work on and I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, check out my other similar videos where I take old houses and redesign them in cool ways. And remember, if you leave a comment on this video with your favorite architectural style no matter how funky you make it i'm gonna put your name into my hat and i might pick you out next video and i'll give you a shout out if i do so leave a comment and check out the next video to see if you made it remember to get creative